Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing a leak regarding the release date of the Ryzen Vcash processors. Obviously, AMD have already shown this off along with benchmarks, and these processors are looking to be very good. According to AMD's own benchmarks, we're seeing about a 15% uplift in various games. However, very interestingly, Grayman on Twitter has said that these figures are actually very conservative, and possibly we're going to be seeing higher values in, well, more titles. I have to admit, I'm very curious to see how this sits in the product stack in the longer term. I wonder if AMD, and this is just me spitballing slash speculation here, but I wonder if processors like the 5900X, 5950X, and upwards the existing Zen Free lineup is going to see a price reduction, and then we're going to see the Vcash processors basically kind of slot in at higher prices, so it almost sandwiches Intel. Now, again, this is just spitballing, but it does kind of make sense. And yeah, it, it would be very interesting to see if AMD did take this approach. Either way, Grayman has also said that these uh, processors will be on the AM4 platform, and basically they're starting to enter production now, as you can see on screen. This actually fully matches up with one of my previous videos, where I basically said that, yep, it is on the AM4 platform 100%. And furthermore, of course, that they will launch this year. And I've been told that now by a couple of sources, so I 100% believe Grayman is right here. It makes sense when you think about it, because if it launched next year, for gamers who want, like, the best, well, they may just choose to go Intel. And again, it's all going to really depend on price and performance. And also, it'll be very curious to see how Intel markets these processors particularly given, seemingly anyway, the CPUs that is Alder Lake because of their uh, hybrid architecture, well, heterogeneous architecture, big dot, little, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting because they seem to do better on Windows 11. I wonder if Microsoft are going to provide updates for Windows 10. I'm also curious because Windows 11 take up or at least interest seems a bit low. Actually, let me know down below. What do you think of Windows 11? I'll be honest, I haven't really had a chance to play around with it yet, but I want to check it out. And yeah, it, I think people are excited about Windows 11, but I do think many people seem to have this like notion of, well, why were you just not incorporating this stuff into Windows 10? So yeah, let me know why. And keeping on the subject of AMD for a few minutes or longer, let's talk about RDNA 3 slash Nave 31, 2 and 33. As there's been, well, quite an interesting number of developments over the past few days. And it's quite interesting because I was actually working on a deeper video, a uh, longer form script, but I've basically kind of put it on hold because a couple of the questions that I had in that script, you know, wanted to pose to you all and yeah, well, basically we've got some answers now. Long story short, it does seem like AMD have made some rather large changes for Nave 31. I'm gonna say 31 for this portion and then I'll explain more why I'm putting caveat in just a second. Long story short, if you've, you know, a familiarity with RDNA 1 and RDNA 2, you'll know that one of the things that AMD did with that architecture is to basically make it more efficient for gaming. And they did a number of things. First, they changed uh, wave fronts to be 32 rather than 64. They also changed the compute units and how they kind of, you know, function in terms of hierarchy. Basically, you have two uh, compute units, AMD have dubbed them dual compute units or work group processors, WGP. Basically, they are two uh, compute units which are nuzzled up lovingly, embracing one another. And yeah, that along with other fundamental changes has essentially meant that Nave 21, for example, was a lot more efficient and a lot better for gaming workloads. Obviously, I'm vastly simplifying things for the sake of this video because, well, yeah, I, I want to go a lot deeper into this in the future. However, there are a couple of very interesting tweets slash comments that have been popping up recently, and I'm actually fairly confident that they are correct. For a long time, my sources have told me that there were changes well, quite a lot of changes to both the front and back end of the processor, 
and you don't necessarily have to think of compute units the same way as you did with Narve 21. Unfortunately, they wouldn't give me any other information. They basically just told me that, which I was going to add in the script I mentioned earlier because it doesn't really tell you enough. Like, it, it's a lot of speculation. Like, it could be a billion things. Are they going to reduce the or increase the number of SIMD per CU? You know, you can start to say, well, at that point, are they going to have like an elephant juggle on screen? Like, what the hell is going to happen? Well, it seems like basically they've changed the number of compute units according to the leaks, and you can see them on screen yourself. So credit to everyone who has contributed to this. I'll link all of the sources in the description, of course. Basically, they seem to have changed not only the number of shader rays, we'll discuss that further in a second, but also the way that compute units are distributed amongst WGP. Essentially, now we have three compute units per WGP rather than the two of, let's say, Narve 21. And this essentially, well, obviously it does depend on the number of compute units total, but it has the ability to drastically increase the number of SIMD total across the card. Also, another fundamental change is that we seem to see a larger number of shader arrays. You can think of shader arrays as essentially building blocks of the GPU. So, for example, you can have um, its own set of ROP portions, obviously, the WGPs, caches, everything else. You, you know, basically plonk several of these together. So, Narve 21, as from AMD's own block diagram, you have four shader arrays, and this seems to, for 31, have increased to a total of six. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting that AMD have done this approach. I also want to add a small bit of clarification. I honestly can't remember if I've mentioned this in the video before, so I'm just going to add it in here. But I do believe that um, I might have been wrong regarding the, um, regarding the chiplets. So essentially there are two types of chiplets on Narve 31 and 32. Narve 33 and 34 are monolithic. And again, I'll get more into the caveat in just a second. I promise I haven't forgotten. So the TLDR is that there's MCD and GCD. So GCD, well, the G probably gives you an indication that it's for graphics, and yeah, you'd be right, my friend. But MCD, I had originally thought from one of my sources that it was actually an IO die and possibly a cache, but I wasn't so certain of that. Then I started to realize that no, it's most likely the Infinity cache, but probably the IO die. However, what I'm now hearing, and this is probably not true, the MCD is almost certainly just the Infinity cache. Now, I'm still not 100% on this, but it does seem that the memory controllers, well, basically they're part of the GCD still. And the reason I was giving you that caveat, by the way, of Narva 33 and 34, is I am being told that there might be some fundamental design differences other than the fact it's chiplets, before someone mentions it, between 31 and 33. For example, I don't know exactly what they mean by that. One person told me that, you know, Narve 33, for example, was more... Uh, okay, so I'm trying to say this without using their exact quote, but basically they said that Narve 33 and 34 was a lot closer in design principles to Narve 21, for example, whereas you don't necessarily expect that same philosophy to extend to 31 and 32. So I do believe that there might be some differences, certain enough at the moment to give a really good kind of in-depth analysis. I'm hearing a lot of theories and a couple of people whisper things to me, but I'm not really comfortable putting it out at the moment. But when you think about it, this does possibly make a lot of sense given so much conflicting information between what we've been hearing. So some of this is probably just BS because some rumors inevitably are just wrong, whether they were maliciously put out to be incorrect or someone just misheard something, it can be quite difficult to know. However, it could also be that some of the information we've been hearing is in regards to 33 or 34 and some of it could be 31 and 32. And again, the Infinity Cache amount I'm hearing for the highest end SKUs is actually, well, 512. Although it still seems such a large amount to me. So there is still that part of me that's thinking, hmm, possibly not. So originally I heard the performance targets were 2.5 times. And then, you know, according to my sources, it was actually higher 2.7 or maybe even 2.8. And if you think about it, all of these additional 
uh, shaders and just the architecture itself possibly does lend itself to that level of performance. I've got a lot of questions of how AMD are going to keep all of those shaders fed. You would assume there's going to be quite a lot of changes just fundamentally across the GPU. And this is just me spitballing. I honestly don't know enough yet. I'm going to be absolutely fascinated for in-depth block diagrams of this thing and just how AMD cobbled it together. Just, I would love to see the changes in the scheduler alone. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they are just kind of going across the entire design. Um, I personally believe that, you know, the design of the chip is probably not like, let's say, Zen 2, where you've got like, you know, the two uh, CPU uh, blocks up there and then the you know the the IO die below it I believe instead it's probably more like Ryzen V cache in terms of aesthetics although this is again just kind of guessing and I do also wonder if AMD have changed the layout maybe with the caches underneath but I don't know just for heat dissipation because yeah this thing is supposed to be pretty damn toasty oh speaking of things that's toasty let's talk about Lovelace zing um, yeah, just a quickie here from kopt 7 Kimmy. He states that he can confirm that every GPC has three CPCs and every CPC has three TPCs. Furthermore, there does seem to be some rumours that we're going to see 9216 CUDA cores, although of course the way that NVIDIA kind of counts this, they usually double them. And rather interestingly, the person that's speculating this was retweeted. So possibly that is accurate. Although, honestly, I don't know the CUDA core configuration for RTX 40. And I still believe that AMD are probably going to have the advantage in terms of pure rasterization performance with their cards. And I think that Lovelace is going to be a very hot little fella, or probably a very hot big fella, in terms of sheer die size. But yeah, I'm not counting NVIDIA out because I'm fairly sure that if Papa has to just squeeze that silicon to the point where it's crying, and yeah, he has to he has to get the the engineers to basically bend the law of physics and to be able to put like a miniature black hole in to suck all of the heat out, he will probably whip the engineers until they do that. Obviously I'm joking, but you get my point. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that I don't think Jensen is going to want to be significantly far behind. And I think that he's going to still have the edge in ray tracing performance. And of course they're going to double down on stuff like DLSS. However, with FSR just really being super duper popular at the moment and it becoming increasingly easy to port to games, uh, including for example, the latest news with uh, Vulcan. Yeah. This is going to be a very interesting GPU war. And actually, you know what? I'm looking forward to Intel getting to in on the fray. But that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, well, you know what to do. You can click the like button because it's YouTube. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you've not already. And I'll see you soon. Have an amazing day, folks. Bye for now.